Hmm. All right. This is the conspiracy theorist is another denomination of Christianity. Could we be in danger of a possible second dark age? Hello, Violet Lavander, how are you doing? A guest is coming on. I'm trying to bring him on right now. I just uh, give me a moment. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. For some reason, uh, like when you're when the video was playing, like I don't know, but your your screen was kind of blurry. Like it was like different colors was like on your screen, but now it, but it's good now. Okay, that's good. Um, <clears throat> just we got around it. Um, okay, so basically, uh, as we discussed earlier, uh, privately, um, the cons so this video's topic, Sylvester, is the conspiracy theorist is another denomination of Christianity, and also, could we be in danger of a possible second dark age? Okay, I'm going to begin... Um, and before I begin, Violet Lavander says, what's wrong with your screen? Yeah, your screen was kind of like all blurry. Yeah, I, I, I don't see any issues on my end, but it's possible there could be an output problem. Oh, wait a minute. I'm seeing it on my profile. My, uh, the screen appears to be upside down and I'm seeing a bunch of lines. With that must yeah, be. That's fine. Yeah, that's what I saw too. Unfortunately, I don't know how to fix that. But as long as you can hear me, which it appears that you do hear me, we shouldn't have any problems in general. Would you agree with that, Sylvester? Yeah, I agree. Okay. And uh, that also includes as long as you can hear Sylvester as well. Anyway, I'm going to begin by talking about reptilians and the New World Order. It's a it's a conspiracy theory that has a lot of traction, a lot of popularity going on in the alternative media. But if you go to the New Testament and you can see the how Satan is referred to as a serpent and a, or a dragon, per se, and the fallen angels, you can see how they used the New Testament's literature to construct the reptilian uh, New World Order and the other conspiracy theories pertaining to uh, um, Satanism because they would uh, they would often relate that to Satanism and they think that Satanists are bad and they have an agenda just of the New World Order and an Antichrist and, they, and it often conflates with aliens and some would even suggest that aliens are fallen angels. Now, what we see going on here is Christianity is finding another way to thrive. And by doing so, they created the conspiracy theories. What do you say about that, Sylvester? So you're pretty much saying how they use uh, conspiracy theories to like prove Christianity? Not just use it, but it looked, from what I can tell, they created the conspiracy theories. They started it. Because uh, this goes back to people like Leo Taxo that wrote that Freemasons are Satanists. Um, it's 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 uh it's also referred to as the taxel hoax. Uh, for anyone that wants to go look it up, um, we have this propaganda going on all the time, where they blame all the evil on Satan, and they try to find other ways to do so to this very day. And some would even suggest that other conspiracy theories. Some people suggest that Satan. Uh, is behind all of the uh, is behind atheism or people believing in evolution 
and all those other sorts of things. You get my point? Yes. It seems to me like people want to try to use skate Satan as a scapegoat to prove their belief systems. Yes. And the thing is, I'm not, I, I don't want people to think that I'm not saying that corruption doesn't exist in governments. Conspiracy theories and corruption in governments have nothing to do with each other. It may appear that they do, but they don't. The conspiracy theories, they originated and are still practically another denomination of Christianity. The New Testament has enough literature in itself to create much of the conspiracy theories that we know exist now. The conspiracy theories is not about freeing people, telling people the truth. Oh, you see, we're not the mainstream, we're alternative. So therefore, we're right about everything that we say. No, that one thing doesn't make another true. That, that's ridiculous, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I, I agree. Violet Lavander says, I hate that they judge us. I agree. I do hate that very much as well. And some people would accuse, uh, the, the thing is that people would accuse us of, of, because we don't believe in God, therefore we're possessed by a demon, or we believe in Satan, they automatically assume these things, which is not true. First off, prove to me there's a Satan, and you also have to prove to me does demonic possession occur? Can you prove those things to me? The thing is, other religions have their own excuses as well for why people don't believe what they're saying. <clears throat> but uh, with Christianity being as popular as it is, on the worldwide scheme of things, they can, they definitely, a lot more people get attacked uh, uh, with um, demeaning words by Christians. Josiah Shan says, screens all blurry. Um, I I have people telling me about things being blurry as well in the video. Uh, I, I I don't know how to get around it. As long as you can hear me, that's all that really matters right now. Um. Anyway, in the meantime, Sylvester, is there anything you want to say? Yeah, just because we don't accept their idea of God doesn't make us bad people. I mean. I mean, people who don't just, I mean, it's like this. They think that if you don't believe in a God or the, or the concept of God, they, mean, they, they, they demean us as being, like, bad people. But it's like, when you when you look at the, like, the people who, who started Christianity, like, you know what I'm saying? You look at people in the Bible who, who killed for God, you know what I'm saying? Like, when they, like, how would you, how would you discern that, though? Like, we're bad people for not believing in God, but then you got people, like, in the Bible, who are believers, for example, like the um, like the golden calf story. I think with Moses, I think um, he told, I think God told him to uh, slaughter all the other. Was it was it the Israelites or the Amalekites? Uh, if I remember correctly, it was it was the Israelites. Uh, 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 they numbered in the three thousand. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the Israelites. Three thousand were killed simply because they built a golden calf. Yeah, it was Israelites because they built the golden calf in the first place. Yeah, so it's like Moses. if you yeah. if you if you believe in God and do what God tells you, even if what he God's telling you to do is wrong, it's still deemed good. So I was like, how so people get a so people I'm pretty much trying to what I'm pretty much trying to say is people base their morality on God. But if God tells you to do something that you wouldn't do, it's kinda of like the divine command to no matter what God tells you to do, his will is always right, so therefore it's not gonna be bad. So it's like, but we yeah. people like us reject that idea because it's like, I don't see, I don't see what's more about that. Like, you do, like God tell you to do something. Like for example, when He told, uh, I think Abraham, Ab was it Abraham or Abraham to sacrifice son Isaac. Yeah, and God's like that was considered good. But if we look, we, we look at it as being wrong and wrong, but according to God's standards, I mean. Everything he does is right, so I mean, you can't. You, how do you dictate what's good and what's what's not good by him? Yeah, and the thing, is, um, I and yeah, I don't think I don't think you can determine what's good or bad about him because even when he apparently appears to be good, it 
you can still see the bad if you get my point it's like um, god it's like god creates circumstances but he doesn't take responsibility for his actions he he, he pins it on either satan or or us or human beings right and calls it sin um yeah it's like how can you not be responsible for your creation in the first place when you're the one who created it? Right. It's like a, when somebody builds a computer, but it doesn't start up, you're the one that did something wrong. It's not the computer's fault. You have to go in there. You got to fix it, uh, connect the wires correctly. If you put the hardware in the wrong place, you get my point. Yeah, I do. So it's not the computer's fault. It's the person that assembled the computer that's at fault. So, and, and there's like, you can pretty much, you have, you can use a lot of different things as examples of uh, the person that did the construction work or whatever is at fault if the, if the, if the construction itself has a flaw in it. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, the next thing I want to get into is is the uh, the Dark Ages? Are we in danger of a second Dark Age? Because when it comes to Christianity, we get conspiratorial denialism. It's, 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 uh, specifically, you got conspiracy theorists that are in denial, not skeptical, but completely in denial. And some fine examples of, the, of this is the they argue about the shape of the Earth, and they also argue about the Moon. They refuse to believe that human beings went to the moon. And they want to say that Earth is another shape other than what what is uh what has been proven. And the thing is what is the logic, first of all, what is the logic of the moon being a fake, a fake moon landing? And what is the logic and the idea that the earth is another shape? And even if it were true that the Earth was another shape, does that change anything relatively? Yes or no? What, what do you say to that? I don't think it would change anything. I mean, Violet Lavender says when he told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac to test him out. That's not making God all-knowing. Like they said, those Christians don't think about that. SMH. Yeah, and, and in Genesis, God says, where are you? Because he can't find Adam and Eve. Yeah, because when you test something, you're trying to get results. You're, you're unsure what the results you're going to get. That's the whole point of testing something. That's why I don't understand how, why would God need to test us anyway? You already know the outcome. Everything is predestined to happen the way God wants it to happen. Everything is according to his will. So, yeah. how, so, what's the point of him testing us if he knows the outcome? Exactly. That it, there would be no, there would be no reason to test something if, if you already know about it. That won't make any sense. And the other thing is, when people say that the earth is flat those people don't realize that the go governments and religion wanted people to believe that the earth was flat and that the earth uh, that the sun rotated around the earth they wanted people to think that and when people challenged that they were killed look at Galileo what happened to him when he questioned things and there are many more examples people got killed for saying that the earth was round not that it was flat, but by saying it was round. Now, what will happen if they get it back? That the Earth is flat. They have when people, if people can become convinced of it, religion is going to become even more powerful than it already is. Violet Lavender says, "Right." Yeah, and and I um, and I hope that the conspiracy theorists come to realize that Christianity that. Um, <clears throat> controls the conspiracy theory that the conspiracy theories the alternative media is another denomination of christianity and it is not what they think it is and you can even go through the conspiracy theories and it 
and you can see how obvious in the number denomination of Christianity, how many times they mention Jesus, and that sometimes they'll call the Vatican Satanists, and that and they'll even accuse uh, <clears throat> major organizations covering up evidence for the for the <laughs> existence of Jesus. First off, I don't know how someone would cover up evidence that exists that for the existence of Jesus in the first place, because if you just go read the New Testament itself, Jesus resembles sun worship, and you can compare the history of Christianity holidays and even the numerology in the New Testament with Roman sun worship, like the winter solstice and the Saturnalia, the Christmas tree coming from the Saturnalia, uh, something like that. And the, and the winter solstice, the free day period where the sun doesn't move. Jesus died and rises again uh, in three days. So the thing is, where do you go? Where, where do you go from all this? It, when, you, when you compare these uh, holidays and the text and how they parallel one another, you'll see that. that the likelihood of evidence existing is slim to none. And the thing is, you can see that they even took attributes of the New Testament from their Old Testament, in which uh, the idea that Jesus fasted for 40 days in the desert. The Israelites were in uh, wandering in the desert for 40 years. Same number, same type of landscape you got the desert in there satan is tempted i'm sorry uh, i meant to say satan has tempted jesus in the desert well set the egyptian god which uh um he's the god of the desert and he had osiris killed it's a uh, very similar to the how jesus died and rose again osiris also died and rose again and Horus avenged Osiris very much how, how like how Michael uh, defeated Satan in, <clears throat> in his rebellion. So, why do these similarities exist if the New Testament is supposed to be the Word of God? Same thing with the Old Testament and among other things. Why, why, why would these similarities exist? Anyway, so is there anything you want to talk about in the meantime? Uh, I don't think of what else to say. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it seemed to me like the New Testament writers used the Old Testament to, to, to pretty much come up with some of that, come up with some similarities in the New Testament. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Not only just that, but I feel like a lot of times people like to say, "Oh, yo, Jesus will based on prophecy." I think they just, I think they use what I said, like I said before, they used the Old Testament and said it side by side. I don't know how, but they said it side by side <clears throat> and then wrote in some stuff in the New Testament, and make it seem like prophecies were fulfilled. Yeah. yeah, and. Uh, yeah, you, you go to uh, Isaiah seven fourteen, and you'll see that they inserted the word virgin in there. But in the original Isaiah seven fourteen, it had like a young maiden. That wasn't was a trying. different. Was, was that, that wasn't a different version of the Bible? Another version? They added the word virgin because in, in, in Judaism, the, the 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 word virgin isn't in uh, Isaiah seven fourteen, but in the Christian Old Testament, it is. It is there because the, the Christian Old Testament is a modification of the Tanakh, and they inserted their own God character in the in the Old Testament. Of course, attributed with the stories of the Jewish God, <laughs> because they're trying to make a they're trying to the in a way they're trying to make the Jewish stories parallel the Christian stories, but. When you go in there and you study the translations, you realize that they made some heavily, heavy modifications to suit their own purposes.
so is there uh, anything else you want to talk about in the meantime? Oh, no, I think that's uh, uh, to be fine.